Hello, my name is Peter Stanton, and I, um, I'm a machinist by trade, and that's what I do for a living, and I actually have my own machine shop, but I also do some blacksmithing on the side, kind of as a hobby, and, and um, I never, I've made some videos for machine work, you know, machine shop stuff, and everything. Uh, I, this is the first video I've ever made for blacksmithing type of thing, and so you're gonna have to bear with me a little on the quality of the video and the sound and everything, because I haven't really um, figured that out too much on blacksmithing stuff, you know, and and at the lighting out in the shop out here. And what well, this isn't really my machine shop. This is a a place I rent to store stuff in. And I've got my blacksmithing stuff here, so I do it here in the store. It, it, well, it's kind of a big storage. It's, it's uh, like 2,000 square feet where I store stuff in the back on some pallet racks and various other junk that everybody seems to accumulate. And um, out here by the door, I do the blacksmithing stuff. And it's, um, I don't know, you got this big open door and the lighting's kind of bright at the door and then it's dark inside. And so it's kind of hard to get decent video here I haven't learned it yet but anyway I'm I want to make this I'm gonna make this video on this piece right here this uh, Celtic knot design thing that um, I didn't actually design the pattern I just I pretty much got it out of a coloring book that I have and I have designed my own patterns in some of these things but this one I didn't I just wanted to show how I go about making one of these. Uh, um, I've only been doing this blacksmithing as a hobby for, I don't know, two or three years. And I'm still accumulating tools and all this stuff and learning how to do stuff. But this stuff interests me because uh, I kind of like the challenge of, of the knot pattern and how to tie it. And I've not seen too many I don't know if there's people doing these things too much. I've not seen too many of them, and I haven't seen any videos on making this kind of stuff on on YouTube. So I'm going to make this little YouTube video, uh, although it might not be that little of a video because it took quite a bit of video, and I don't really want to um, cut the video too much or speed through it, fast forward through it, or various things like that because... I want to show how I actually do it and, and, and have somebody be able to kind of get the idea instead of just a fast forward thing and it's like so fast you, you can't even see what's happening really. Um, just to make a short video so it might be more than one episode to show it but I think it kind of be worthwhile. Not really that I'm any expert at blacksmithing or anything like that. In fact, I'm not expert at all. I, I, you know, I know machine work because I do that for a living but this is kind of my hobby and uh, but it might help somebody else that's a little bit less experienced than I am and wants to attempt something like this because they are they can be very beautiful patterns and I kind of like to do this I've been I've made a lot of these little round things I guess you call them like trivets maybe or something like this just to practice doing it because um, someday I want to get into bigger stuff we own some property in Mexico. We're building a small like bed and breakfast, and I want to do some iron work for the building. So I'm mainly I got into this blacksmithing for that intent. But um, I posted some of this stuff on on uh, Facebook, and there seems to be a lot of interest in these designs. And so I think people might be interested in to see how I made it. I had to learn it all myself, really, because uh, I I don't see anybody else making it on YouTube. I couldn't find any video on it and, and I and I've never taken a class in blacksmithing with anybody that's experienced so I might be doing things the weird way I guess but it works for me so let's get into the video and we'll see how I did this little thing here and it seems like people like these kind of videos I can do more in the future if you know you like it so let's get to it Okay, we're going to try to um, 
make this inner pattern here not this out, outer one and we're going to decide how we want to bend this we're going to make it out of half inch by one eighth inch flat bar a36 flat bar now I got this is I didn't draw this design I've drawn some in the past but I didn't draw this one I got it out of this book here Celtic designs it's a coloring book actually that I found at Barnes and Noble and it's on page 52 of this book and then I just enlarged it with a copying machine at work so that this this distance was roughly a half an inch wide so this pattern is actually uh, three repeat repeating patterns which if we if we break it here we're going to cut the bar here we're going to join the bar I should say here and here so this pattern like I've traced the center line with the pencil here goes around here and then it repeats again here and again here the only place it overlaps is in these positions right um, here and here and here this is where the pattern overlaps so we got to think a little bit about how we want to bend this bar now I measured it by pasting it off with a pair of dividers like this I set the dividers at at a half an inch and paste off the line and I came out with uh, 56 and a quarter spaces and if they're half an inch we divide that by two we got 28 and a quarter is what it takes to go around the the whole um, pattern here on one side of it so I'm gonna add three inches more to the lengths on the ends here just to have extra stock and to help make these last bends here easier instead of having to grab onto a short piece to make them so adding the three inches on onto the 28 and a quarter that comes out to 34 and a quarter we're gonna round that down to 34 inches which is what I've marked here the overall length of our stock we're gonna cut and then I, I, pick, I uh, divided this off up to this bend here was 15 spaces so that's seven and a half plus three inches of extra stock makes us ten and a half. We're going to make the first bend here because this is going to be the hardest, the hardest bend to make. It's a full 180 degrees, and we're going to start the the bending there for the pattern. Um, if you just started at the end of this thing and started bending and trying to overlap this, it'd be awfully difficult to do and come come out sort of right so we're gonna make the first bend here and then we're gonna try to bend this bend underneath so so this thing would be going off straight like this this piece at that point we'll be bending that underneath and trying to accomplish this bend so we would bend all the three pieces like that we're gonna cut three pieces for all three sides and then after that we're going to um, we're going to bend this underneath and come out and, and feed it through this loop we've already made and, and come out straight like this. This is going to be a little bit tricky, but I, I, I've done this before and I'll show you how I think it'll be done. Because we're going to have to bend it here and get this shape, bend this one, and at that point we'll just have it overlapping here, but it won't be going through the loop because it has to go underneath and up through the bottom. So then we're going to have to twist the whole thing downward and bend in the middle of that bar up and then work it on through here a little at a time and then lay it out flat. And then we'll make this bend around here and lay it out flat this way, like that. But we're, going to, we're not going to try to make finish the rest of the pattern. We're going to do that to all three pieces, or attempt to anyway. I've never done this pattern before, so we're going to see how it goes. And then what we have to do is actually bend it straight up like this, right in this point somewhere, so we can lay the next pattern over the top of this one and the next one over the top of the other one all the way around. And then we're going to have to take this piece that's sticking straight up. It's going to be twisted, actually, at this corner. And we're going to lay it down flat. At the same time, we're going to have to bend 
curl that piece up underneath and through this slot here and out straight at that point. So we'll have that pattern with these three pieces sticking out straight like this, this one, this one, and this one, right? Sticking out straight and hopefully thread fed underneath this one and over the top of these two. Then we got to make this 90 degree or a little bit more 90 degree bend. We're not going to try to do an upset corner so this is really going to look more like this. It's going to have more of a rounded corner on this corner. Um, I don't want to go to the, I mean it's not impossible but I don't want to go to the trouble of doing that. We're just going to bend the stock as it is, not try to upset the metal into this corner. So like I say in reality this is going to look more like this on these these corners here will be more rounded off. This one actually is drawn more rounded in their drawing, but it'll be more a little bit more than that. And then then we'll have this piece sticking straight out this way. Okay, and then we're gonna have to twist take that and twist it upward and then, then bend it back around and go back down through here and out that way and then we'll make this bend over to the end of our pattern. Hopefully that'll go that way. Um, I've, I've done a similar things before and, and I'll show you as I do it how I get that to weave in and out. It's just, it's just a matter of you got this piece sticking up, you got to bend it about halfway down again and curve it and bend the end curve and work it through there as you're heating it a little at a time with your, um, in this case, scrolling tongs because this is fairly small bar, only half inch by eighth of an inch. That's what we're going to do deal with. So let me go cut the stock and we'll see what we can do to get started. Okay, ten and a half inches. This doesn't have to be perfect because we got extra three inches of stock on here. So now normally I might put a center punch mark on that, but I don't really want that to show in the finished part, so I'm gonna try to do it without a center punch mark. We'll see what happens. Sort of comparing that to the drawing, it's approximately what we want right there. Now we got to bend all the three other ones the same way. Okay, <clears throat> got the three pieces bent approximately right here. Um, the neighbor kind of interrupted me bending the last one, so. comes over he wants to talk even if you don't want to <laughs> I guess that's the way it is Straighten this 
one out a little bit. Okay, now, according to what we talked about, we have to take this and turn it upside down, really. We're gonna make this bend that goes this way. Oop, I'm probably in the way. But, uh, we gotta make this bend, bend this up over. So we're flipping it over. I think we're flipping over, let me see. If, no. This has to actually go this way to flip it over. Because this is gonna go around so this long piece has got to be on this side when it's up, when it's right side up. So we got to flip this over and we got to bend this this way over the top of that and try to approximate approximate this uh, so that when we lay it that way, it'll go up underneath. Approximate this uh, this curve right here. So how are we going to do that? Let's think about this a second. Need a soapstone. So, might burn the paper. See, it's not that hot now. So we want this thin to start about right there. It'll be a gradual bend. So it's a little more than a 90 degree bend, but we actually want to do it on this side, right here. So once we get the first one bent, It'll be a little easier. Instead of using the drawing, we can use the part itself. So we gotta figure out how we wanna do this. Okay, so it's not looking too bad. You can see that very well. See, it's got to bend it a little more right here, down. That looks pretty good. We're, we're um, up to there, and we got to start this bend. Whoa! Hot. Almost burned the paper. And we got to start this bend. The bend starts about right here. It bends just a gradual bend back this direction. Okay, it's not too bad. So I'm gonna bend all three of them like that, or the other two, and then we'll come back and we'll, then we're gonna have to bend the other side down underneath. This one's gonna go underneath here. And underneath here, the next bend. But let me do that to all those and then we'll come back.
Okay. They're not too bad. I think I need to bend this one here. I don't know if you can see. Maybe you can. This one right here has to be bent just a little bit more. So we're gonna do that. Before we get too carried away. So that we kind of have them all fairly close to being the center. have right at the moment right here uh, like this I better bring this around and underneath that or if we flip it over it's going to be around and over the top it should be easier to bend it that way so it's got to have a it's got to have a start of a gradual bend It's bend. Actually, I may have bent this a little bit too much. I gotta straighten those out. But we'll do that later. So this bend actually starts about right here, underneath that other piece, and it bends around. So gotta transfer that over to the other side because that's where we're gonna be swatching it. Bend it around. really hot in here today. It must be like a hundred degrees in here. Got the fan blowing but it keeps blowing these drawings around. Okay, it's not bad. I don't know if you can see it here. Let's see if I can show it to you without burning the drawing. Let's see, we're coming up like that. Okay, so we're going to bend the other ones like that so we don't get too far off course here. So let me do that. And then we'll come back and we'll make this a. Uh, we'll make this bend right here over to there. And then we got to do this thing of putting it through there. We have to bend this, make a bend, and it's going to come through here eventually. It's going to go up and under. Oh no, actually, it's going to go under. It's going to, looking at the drawing, it's going to go under and through this way. First, we've got to make this bend. It's about this big, and it comes straight over this way.
Absolutely perfect match, but they're not too bad. Not hard to bend. That compl complicated of a bend, you get it perfect. Now, what we got to do is put this through there and up around. So we're going to have to put it in the vise. Like, let me get back up here. Like this. You can see that on the screen all right. Now, we're going to do this last one. Twist it here, right here. Twist it. I'm going to heat it right there. I'm going to do it from behind. Them. Twist this. Out in an angle. Something where we good enough so we can get this, bend this piece around and get it back in here. Now, on the end here, we've got to put a hook out this direction so that uh, we can start it in that hole when we get it bent back around. So, something like that probably be good. Now, I'm going to heat this up. here, bend it back around so we can go in there. Put kind of a gradual heat on here. So you don't really want to get this too hot because that's going to bend all in one place when you do it. So you want to get it a little bit hot, then you can uh, start to bend it. See how it bends more uniformly when it's not in a real hot heat. See it here a little bit. We want to start this end of this thing in there, like that. So we put the vice grips. get this sort of uniformly heated up here. Not too hot. So really you can just barely see a red on, on the material like a, just, just a little bit above black heat almost. And that way it won't see it's starting to barely glow red. Get it over here. You may not be able to see it on the camera, I don't know. Let's see it. I'm going to the tongs and bend it. And just pull it through here. That, see? And that one almost did in one shot. Get good at this, I guess. I could do that. So then, that's not hot. A little bit. Take it over here on the bench. Slide, slide you over without too much. Heat this up just a little bit more right here. And this. We'll do this first. I'm going to take this twist out of it. Gently. Okay. Here. Okay. Mostly out. Heat this up. Uh, 
and you know, forcing that down will shove this that way through the slot. Okay, there. That's it. So I can hold these. Those are the three of them. It's ready to. These little dings, like right there, if you can see them, I don't know if you can see them. Well, the wire brush will take those off of there. Like here. It, it kind of gets galled up when you pull it through. The metal is still pretty soft, even though it's not really red hot still pretty soft and it galls up pretty easily on sharp corners. So you have to be a little bit careful. Okay, now we've got to figure out the next step. There's the two of those. There's actually three of them. Three of them all together. They should be all more or less the same. I can hold these up. Very cl pretty close to each other. They're not perfect, but they'll be good enough, I think, for this. So that now comes the tricky part. We gotta put it all together and then start bending, weaving in but in between. So let me cool everything off and see how I gotta do that. This is always the hardest part of making one of these things is is the final assembly. It's like uh, fitting a puzzle together. It's, it's like um, you just you have to intertwine these pieces and get them all put together. And then then we're gonna have to do some. These are the most difficult bends. We got to bend down, but first we got to get it to a point where. Um, we're sitting together. I've almost got it. I mean, this is the reason I, these last bends here, I didn't bend them down under here. Like they're got, this this piece has to go under. I don't know if you can tell this, but it has to go underneath and up and around and over. And you never could get this thing together. These three pieces together 
without leaving these up above on top so you, you have to start them all at once and close close them together now I, I've got them sort of in the right place but I've got to get them out further and clamp them there with some vice grips or something so they don't move while I make the final while I make the final bends and this this is kind of the most difficult part of the whole thing right here this final assembly if you want to call it that so I'm trying to the three spots where the pattern intersects I'm trying to push them out as far as they can go and then clamp them with 